Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle, from tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride. Let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 176 and email the show pedalshift at pedalshift.net or call the voicemail hotline at 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 176th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. My name is Tim Mooney, and I am super excited to be sharing with you Volume 16 of Tour Journals, we're calling this one Sweltering Summer on the c just to get a lot of semblance there for you. Um, this is the first of two parts of my tour on the c during the hottest and muggiest stretch of the summer of 2019. You can check out the packing episode in pedal shift number 175, which was last week if you're playing the home game, for the ride preview and all of that. Come back next week for episode number 177 for the thrilling conclusion. A little bit of housekeeping before we get cracking here. If you are listening to the show here in the moment as it gets released, tomorrow, Friday, August 30th, 9 p.m. Eastern Time is the most recent, the upcoming live show. Uh, Send in your Ask Me Anything questions. uh, Hang out for the cold soaking demos. We've got a lot of things going on with all of that. Normally, or at least I, I should say historically, the live show drops the week after it is done. However, due to uh, the tour journal and a few other things going on, it's going to be coming out a few weeks from now. So we don't interrupt the tour journal and the, the regular flow of the show. So if you're dying to know all about how I rock cold brew coffee on tour, pedalshift.net slash live Friday, August 30th, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you there. Housekeeping parts here. Next week, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing part two, episode number 177 of the Pedal Shift Project, the thrilling conclusion to Tour Journals Volume 16, Sweltering Summer on the CNO. Say that 16 times fast. The week after that, we're going to be doing a best of. Normally, the best ofs come out kind of in that first week, but because of eh, the way the calendar was falling and all of that and wanting to get this show out to you, uh, the best of is going to be going basically mid-month. A friend of the show, Guthrie Straw, rebroadcast of his visit to the show talking about bicycle touring India, about his experience cycling in Eastern Oregon. It's a really good one. I hope you uh, stick around for that if you have not heard it already. Even if you have, listen to it again. Guthrie's good people, man. The week after that, we're going to be doing the live show replay. So that'll be episode number 178. 178? 170? Yes, 178 of the Battleship Ship Project will be that next week. And that will be the live show replay. If you're unable to make it on Friday, August 30th, you can take a gander to it then. And uh, I've got some other great things coming up for the rest of September. I have a great interview in the works with a familiar voice or two coming up. More details on that later. If you subscribe to the newsletter, you will actually, hopefully, maybe, perhaps, I'll be able to reveal that in the September newsletter, which comes out towards the front of the month. That is all housekeeping that I've got for you. Let's talk a little bit about the tour journal. I don't think I need to repeat for most of you my love of the Chesapeake and Ohio National Historic Park towpath. It is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, The fact that it begins just outside my door, practically, it's really about a two mile ride, but you understand, (laughs) Um, and goes all the way to Cumberland, Maryland. It is this beautiful ribbon, this beautiful 184 and a half mile green tunnel that stretches from basically where I live to way, well, way out in Western Maryland. And I like to ride it as much as possible. This year, I had my sights set on doing it in the summer, which is a little bit unusual for me. Why? This is not the most habitable place in the world during summer. It's really, really hot. In fact, if you live in Washington, D.C., most smart people get the heck out of D.C. during August. Me, I'm like, nah, let's let's eschew the modern conveniences of air conditioning and, I don't know, comfort <laughs> for riding in really the hottest weather possible. So this is the story of the really, really hot ride on the CNO. Hope you enjoy. From mile marker zero, it is 
the beginning of volume 16 and my umpteenth through ride, hopefully, of the CNO. I think I'm at, I'll, I'll call this mile marker zero where I'm at right now. Uh, it's, it's very close, if not actually mile marker zero. I'm right by the bike shop, the uh, Fairfield in whatever by Marriott, big footers, die works, vintage building. And you know, it's cool, it's nice. The rain has already come. And you know, I'm gonna try to do a little night riding here because for one big reason, is tomorrow's just gonna be brutal. The other is the Y is closed. I, I kind of like to get some miles in, had dinner, I, I'm, I'm feeling good. And you know, it's not gonna be any better temperature wise. So I've got my bike light on and you're, you may hear by now I'm rolling. And I've got four liters of water city water too, which I think is going to be helpful. Rolling by the bike wash station, which is supposed to be for hotel guests only. It would be wrong if you weren't a hotel guest and took advantage of that. That would be a terrible thing if somebody ever did that. hope nobody does that. I don't think they want you to do that. Just, just, just so you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm on the boardwalk here and going to be going on the bridge. So I've got camping options for about every four to five miles out of town here. If my bike light doesn't illuminate the trail very well, you can hear the, I'm sure you can hear this, the elevated section here over an old bridge. Got over the train tracks here. So it's lit here for a little ways by kind of some street lights, not very well. I have a USB powered or USB charged light, which foolishly did not fully recharge. I am on the lower setting right now. And you know what? In the pitch black here, it illuminates pretty well. So I think I'm gonna certainly go for the first camp. I've got a battery, I can recharge it if need be. Now that just depends on how far I want to go tonight. It is 8.45, am I right on that? I'm sorry, no, it is 9.15 p.m. I never ride late. I've never done any night riding. But after listening to some recent Sprocket podcast and Guthrie talking about some night riding and I think Aaron talking about some night riding, it sounded pretty good. And in a time when I'm going to be having highs of uh, close to 100 tomorrow and heat index is very high. You know, it may be safer in a sense for me to illuminate the trail, go a little bit slower, of course. In fact, I'm pointing my light down so I can see the trail a little bit better. The nice thing is that you don't have to worry about being seen. We'll just take this campground by campground. And I think I've already passed the uh, mile marker 184. Yeah, I know I have because I usually take a picture by it and I recognize that I'm passing. So in my yakking, I've already done the first half mile. So beautiful area here. I'm coming into an area that's more illuminated now. I don't know if this is a safety issue uh, outside of, you know, getting into an accident or hitting something or whatever because I, I'm not seeing the trail well enough. I don't get the impression that that's an issue, and frankly, just between you and me, I'm probably faster than anybody else who's on this trail at this moment who would wish to do me some harm or wish to get stuff out of me. And I tend to find on Sunday nights, when I'm camping down here, which I've done before, it's pretty quiet, even in the teeth of summer. I may not do another edition until the morning because uh, depending on where I end up, I may end up with folks in a campground. But it appears that the rain is done for the night around here. So, mosquito willing, I may not even set up the tent. So we'll just kind of see how this all goes. So, uh, you know, if you don't hear from me, <laughs> I'm somewhere near Cumberland, Maryland. You'll hear from me. It's all good. From just outside of Cumberland, Maryland, 
we'll call this day one. You'll probably notice that I am recording while riding. Just feels like a good morning to do that. Not unlike last night. I realized that uh, last night's report did not include uh, my experience on the train, so I thought I would talk a little bit about that. Of course, spoiler alert, I made it uh, at the end of last night's episode. It was sort of like, hey, if you don't hear from me. (laughs) So the train ride was perfectly fine. We were a little late getting out, but uh, I had a a nice little uh, surprise uh, before I got on the train. I'm I pre-ordered some Subway sandwiches. My intention was to just hop on the trail, knowing that Cumberland was going to be mostly closed on a Sunday evening, that I wouldn't have many opportunities to get food. Uh, So I pre-ordered two Subway sandwiches, one for dinner and one for lunch today. And I brought a a frozen ice pack that's so enormous, it's still mostly frozen. So it's keeping everything nice and cold for all you food safety types out there. Fun thing was... I had to go to the second, the lower level to get to the subway. And of course, I've got a fully loaded bike. And stairs and escalators are no good. So I was hunting down the elevator. And all of a sudden, I go, I hear, hey, Tim. And a listener named Ryan <laughs> kind of chased me down. He was sort of like, hey, I figured it was you. Because, <laughs> you know, I rock a little bit of the orange. And I'm uh, my new addition to the gear, what is holding my ice pack is a... Syracuse University backpack, so I mean, I couldn't be it couldn't be more obvious uh, when I'm rolling in a Union Station in Washington D.C. Uh, my identity, if you listen to the show. So, anyways, got to meet him, his fiance, two of his friends who had just completed a through ride from the Gap all the way down to D.C. They're from Toledo, Ohio, and we're taking the sleeper car back. So I didn't get a chance to hang out with him on the train at all, but uh, had, you know, got to chat up a little bit while we were waiting for the train and uh the nice thing was is that Ryan and his crew looked at my, looked after my bike while I ran downstairs rather than having to take the elevator down so that was really nice it's always nice to meet people uh when I'm out there so if you do happen to see me please please introduce yourself say hi Ugh. and uh mm, we'll keep that in the podcast um I just went through which is a very typical thing in the mornings the early mornings on it's you know someone has to take a face full of spider web and i just did um i have this funny feeling the way i'm going to go out is i'm going to be going through and get nailed by a wolf spider and it will turn out that i'm allergic to wolf spider bites that's what i think but hopefully not anyways uh last night oh train ride was fine uh, we were late getting out, which was fine. Um, it's unusual, but it usually means that the tra- the inbound train was so late they couldn't turn it around in time. Um, and the inbound train is usually supposed to get in around 1 o'clock for a three-hour turnaround. I think that they turned it over much quicker than that. Uh, and we still left about, I want to say, 15 minutes late. No big deal. The only issue was... I had a limited amount of sun on the Cumberland end, and as I mentioned, I wanted to try to get some miles on, uh, and because I was in, I was prepared to do that. Subway sandwich, etc. Okay. So, train, it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. Uh, Sidebar, the uh, bicycle situation, as it has been on a few occasions, no hanging racks, just lay your bike flat in the car. Which, which is interesting uh, uh, that they do it that way. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think it's insecure. I mean, the train's not exactly like shaking and sliding all over the place. Pardon me when I cross this road. There's a few roads you cross in this section of the towpath. Rural roads, but you want to make sure there's houses nearby and it's uh, at the hour that I think people would be going to work. So, we're uh, rolling along. My bike is laying flat. Kept actually one, my front bag just strapped right on because why bother? Threw the other bags into my duffel. Went up two cars, no problem. Sat down, enjoyed my sandwich. Uh, Had a nice cold drink as well because I had the ice block there. And uh, yeah, it was great. (laughs) Then all of a sudden, damn train just stops, which is not unusual, you know? Sometimes there's a CSX line. 
you gotta wait for them to go by. Well, they get on the intercom and say, oh, uh, sorry for the delay. There's a small tree in our way blocking the track. Now, the use of the term small is probably, well, it's all relative, right? We sat there for at least 20 minutes while the, they had a crew that removed this said small tree. To me, a small tree is one that you could remove by hand, something that I could handle on, say, the CNO. However, <laughs> this, this obviously was a much bigger tree. It required more activity to get off. But anyways, it was eventually removed. We end up about a full hour late, and the sun is completely down by the time I get to Cumberland, uh, which was a bit of a bummer, because if, if the train had been on time, which it typically is, uh, going in that direction, I would have had about 45 minutes before the sun went down. I would have had, oh, give or take, um, you know, probably another half hour of twilight, give or take. So, you know, it would have been, it would have been uh, good riding. Uh, but that was not to be. So my biggest thing at that point was, all right, let's get everything on the bike and assess, see how dark it really is. And the other big thing was fill up, fill up with water because today, hello to beautiful deer here. So uh, I did manage to find a relatively well hidden water fountain over by the bike shop and filled up four liters of water plus my two water bottles plus put water in my cold brew coffee container. So I was maxed out on water and then took a big long drink and cameled up because I've been uh, strangely dehydrated and still feel a little dry right now, which of course is a terrible thing going into a hot day like this. So I get to, I get rolling and my light was fine. I kept it on a the low setting rather than the high setting just because, it, uh, you know, I was, as you heard uh, from the last report, all hot to trot about going, yeah, maybe I'll go 20 miles. Well, took a few faces, facefuls of spider webs. They were, they were getting set up early last night and sections of the trail that are actually pretty well lit because of the industrial part of town. There's a uh, city park. So uh, you get a little bit of a blowback, which is kind of nice. Another this is the busiest of roads, and of course, right when I get on, crossing, the car comes. It's around a corner. It's, a very, it's my least favorite part of the Cumberland area because it's, a, it's not a very well-traveled road. It's not like it's a busy highway, but it's uh, busy enough that there always seems to be a car. They come from around the corner, and they're coming at speed. And I think that a lot of folks don't uh, respect the fact there's a trail there in their mind's eye as they are approaching that curve, or they may not know. Anyways, sidebar. So I start riding, take the face full of spider webs like I have this morning, and when I get to the areas that are not very well lit, it starts to get a little, a little too dark for my taste. And I hit one rut, and I thought to myself, and it was a real heavy one, I had also heard from the folks who had done the trail that the conditions were a little, not dicey, but like well, wet and rutted and whatnot. And I knew what sections they were talking about. In fact, I'm starting it right about now. Um, and I thought, you know, this is, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be a hero. Uh, I wanted to do some night riding and enjoy it. And I had gone through all of my enjoyment of it. It was nice and cool. And I thought, I think it's about time. So the very first campsite is Evitts Creek. It's not a great campsite. It's a little sloped. It's great if you're a hammocker. There's a great tree to hang your ha hang hammock, but there's only one. And when I got there, I saw that there was a, a hiker who had hung his hammock there. So I knew that needed to be a little on the quiet side because I didn't want to disturb him. It turned out to be him. Um, and so I set my stuff up in the dark. It is cool, but still very humid. And, you know, that's not, doesn't make for good sleeping. Uh, did not have my fan with me because I couldn't 
find it. So I broke out the uh, cooling towel, the uh, evaporative cooling towel. And I knew that it was pretty good. And boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what, I actually slept with it on around my neck. And I didn't think that I would be able to do that. You know, it's slightly damp, not wet. But what it just does enough, and it's, it's pleasingly cool enough, that it took the place of having a little bit of a, a fan wind on me. And so I, I did okay, uh, sleep-wise. I uh, track my sleep these days with my watch, and I'm not saying it was an all-star sleep, but it actually did okay. Uh, my biggest, if I had had, another thing I, I didn't bring, foolishly, was earplugs. I always tell people bring earplugs on the CNO. Ebbets Creek is right next to a train line. The trains were actually not the problem last night. It was just a noisy evening full of frogs and whatnot. We're sort of at peak frog season right now, and they are noisy until, wow, probably two, three in the morning at, at, at the latest, earliest, excuse me. Uh, so yeah, but I did end up getting some sleep. I got, my, my tracker was like, yeah, you fell asleep and you had some deep sleep here and there, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, woke up this morning with the light, really with the twilight. And uh, I was able to say hello to the hiker and had some breakfast, the cold brew coffee. I prepped actually on the trail. I I forgot to mention on the, during one of the areas where there was some, uh, there was a light under a bridge coming out of town. I actually threw, ground my coffee on the trail with my hand grinder and threw that in. So it brewed up overnight and threw it into the filter this morning. And man... I'll tell you what, that was one of the better cups of coffee I've ever had on the trail. And, you know, it was nice that it was cool. Kinda, even though it's a cool morning, was, I probably woke up to about 68 degrees. But it's muggy, and I'll tell you what, that was a very refreshing way to get started. So, I am a big fan of it. I've got the setup in my lower rack. Excuse me, not lower rack, excuse me, below my... Well, let's see, that's not the top tube. Basically, on the tube face on the ground, I have a uh, the emergency water bottle slot is there. I did not bring an emergency water bottle because I am carrying the bladder of <laughs> the tank, the four liter tank. So I'm I actually brought two water bottles just so I don't have to keep constantly refilling one. But my plan is to uh, grind up some coffee at lunch and get that going, and it'll go all through today and into tomorrow morning and in the morning just filter it through it filters very quickly because it's a very coarse grind yeah i'm really enjoying it i i'm uh, going to be demoing that on the live show now of course if i think about this right you will have already seen the live show well i i don't even remember what order things go but anyways if you're if you haven't seen it yet the live show will include a demo of my technique and if i refine it anymore it will be told on that show. So today, because I did five miles last night, I've got about eh, 55 to 60 today total, give or take. And it just sort of depends on where I decide to camp tonight. My intention is to do what I always do on this on this portion move my butt as quickly as practicable through the rural, the truly rural parts of this trail and get to Paw Paw. And from there, uh, the plan will be take a lunch break, water up. Um, probably won't go into the town of Paw Paw. I don't have any need to. And then get rolling through the tunnel. I'm told that Nobody had to stop in recent days, so that's that's good. They're, they're doing the descaling work still on the far side of the tunnel as I'm going through at the DC side. <clears throat> but I'm hopeful that they won't be working on it today, or I'll time it right so that I can go through it without any delay. And then that'll be a nice, cool respite. And then from there, 
It's uh, straight to Hancock. And my plan there is to grab a shower in the town park, throw on my uh, bathing suit, and just shower down, because I will need it by then. Because it will be quite hot, dude, quite muggy and humid. Um, but if I bang out the miles, I will get there before. I really have to soak it in for too terribly long. Trail conditions so far are as described. They are a little bit rutted around here, but I'll tell you what, trail's in magnificent shape compared to past years. There was a story that was told by, uh, I think Ryan, the guy I met, that he ran into somebody who had done the trail 11 times or something like that, and she said it was the worst it's ever been. And I am... I don't, I, that was certainly her experience. I'm not going to discount her experience, but I'll tell you what, it's been bone, bone dry relative to last year. Last year was so bad, I couldn't even get on the trail that much. So I don't consider this too bad. I think if you're used to non backcountry trails, this might not be a, an ideal for you. But for me, this is pretty glorious. All right, so that's a long installment this morning. I will check in again later in the day to give an update on how things are going here on day one of the CNO uh, from Cumberland to Hancock, Maryland. From Paw Paw, West Virginia. It's about a mile marker 155, give or take. Um, I'm actually, I shouldn't say I'm in West Virginia. I'm on the Maryland side of the river. Uh, right on the towpath. I can see West Virginia across a very shallow Potomac River as I look across. This is actually the first real good look of the river that I've had uh, for really the better part of the day. Excellent riding today. There certainly were some sections since I last chatted that were yeah, a little rutted, a little muddy here and there, but really excellent conditions for the trail. Uh, I think that it, it's always really interesting getting people's takes on what they think the trail is and the conditions that it is. Uh, I, I, I think that that stretch between Cumberland and Paw Paw was pretty great. Pretty great for what it, it normally is. There are sections that are a little rutted. There are sections that are going to have a little bit of mud on it. But um, for the most part, it was very firm, very fast. Uh, probably one of the better times I've made in that section uh, really since I've started riding this trail. I'm doing what I normally do, which is to grab lunch um, on this side of the Paw Paw Tunnel. And the reason is, is that there's facilities here. On the other side, it's just sort of, it's, it's the beginning of the real wildernessy section that essentially goes all the way till Hancock. Yeah, you've got Little Orleans, which has become a little even more built up than it has been since they've extended the Western Maryland Rail Trail. But, you know, all you've got there is basically Bill's Place, uh, which is a bar, uh, which I tend not to go to. I've, you know, it's one of those places, yeah, go there once. It's kind of iconic, but it's not super duper special. And I know that there are people that disagree with me greatly. That is cool. Um, yeah, but on this side of the uh, Paw Paw Tunnel, there are a couple of picnic tables. There's uh, uh, Porta Potty. It's, it's great. It's, it's a great place to take a break. It also happens to be just about the halfway point between Cumberland and Hancock. So uh, for my biking day, you know, it's, it's a little bit less than halfway, uh, given the fact that I started five miles in, but that's fine. I've got 30, do I have 30 miles? I don't even have 30 miles to go, uh, give, eh, give or take 30 miles. I, it, it really just depends on where you consider my stopping to be. Uh, I am intending on taking the Western Maryland Rail Trail later today. Uh, that is an option that I've got uh, not too terribly far after the tunnel. Uh, maybe an hour, perhaps hour and a half away, uh, give or take, depending on how much speed I get and how what the trail conditions are like. But uh, I, I like that new extension. I think it's good. Um, I've done the trail parts before, and it's fine. Uh, the, the, it's just nice to uh, mix it up and get on some paved areas. It'll be a little bit faster, and on a day that's supposed to be as hot and muggy as it's supposed as it's going to be, probably good for me to get to Hancock even quicker. I have to say right now, it's beautiful. I mean, it's been in the 70s so far into the probably low 80s uh, within the next uh, few minutes, but it's actually quite good. And I think if there's going to be any issues with humidity, it's going to be kind of in the mid to late afternoon. And frankly, I am hoping to be done by that point. 
that's the bonus for getting out early. You know, I'm working on much less sleep than I would love to get, but you know, I, 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 all I would be doing is kind of tossing and turning or sitting there in camp and there was just no good reason for that. So might as well get up and get going. And I think I've been rewarded with really nice trail conditions, really quiet, um, a really good escape. I, I, I just love getting on this section of the trail because I have the opportunity to just be alone with myself and my thoughts. And occasionally we'll run into some other folks, run into two people who are cycling in the opposite direction. I've not been passed once. I don't know if anybody was coming from Cumberland uh, that I'm aware of. I haven't passed uh, anybody. I think there was one other tent at one of the campsites, and I think I've passed f six, either six or seven of the sites so far, and uh, really very quiet on this end of the trail, which is interesting considering the time of year. The uh, one person was going, one person I just said hello to, and the other person is cycling all the way to Seattle. So uh, that was, we had a nice little chat there, and uh, Wish him, of course, the best of luck. He's just really only a few days in uh, to a pretty epic ride that'll stretch into uh, probably the early fall, I would imagine. So uh, I'm going to finish up lunch here, maybe uh, hit the restroom, continue to sort of dry out a little bit. I find that one of the good benefits of wearing quick dry clothing is that even though you sweat in them and they get a little bit damp, you know, once you, if you take a, a kind of an extended lunch break and you're walking around, things will dry out kind of nicely. And that just benefits you better later on in the ride. Generally, what I find is I, I do, I ride really strongly the first half of the day. The third quarter of the day is when things uh, start getting a little fatiguey. And then the fourth quarter of the day, eh, you're, you're, ready, you're ready to be done by that point um, on the first day of any ride when I'm doing about 60 miles on the trail. I don't know if that's pattern's going to hold. I'm still riding pretty strong. I've, I've had good fitness uh, this year. I, I think that's been one thing that I'm really happy about. Although I haven't been riding real mileage like this since really May, June. So, you know, I, I, I was traveling a bit and wasn't really getting the miles in. I have been doing a little bit of maintenance rides here and there, uh, but nothing more than maybe 10 to 30 miles in a given clip. So doing 60, of course, is more, <laughs> but it's not that bad. And I've been giving myself the benefit of having some sugar and uh, staying really hydrated and feel good. The sandwich made it just fine. My uh, ice pack is still cold, but has finally melted all the way through. <laughs> so it's one of those types of ice packs that uh, we get with our, kind of, uh, what do you call them? The meals in a box, the box meal kits. And, uh, I am probably going to properly dispose of it in Hancock uh, since I'll have the opportunity. That'll be a bunch of weight that I'll be getting rid of as well, which is kind of nice. And uh, yeah, all good. Plenty of water left. Haven't had to touch any of the pumps. Don't think I will I, as I peer at my... Yeah, I've, I've gone through about a liter and change of my four liters. So I've got plenty of water to get me through the day, even if I start drinking at a more rapid clip, which I would anticipate that I will. And then I'll be in Hancock, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll probably grab a, I'll grab a shower for sure. I'll grab some dinner. I may go to one of the restaurants there and have a little celebratory beer. And I will. Uh, I think I'm going to go on to one of the campgrounds on the far side of Hancock uh, for the night. I uh, don't really think that I want to test out the town's camping option. Uh, I, I think I'd, I think I'd like to kind of be more alone in my thoughts and uh, perhaps have a campsite to myself tonight, which would be great. But we'll see. If I don't, so be it. From Hancock, Maryland, a sultry, steamy, crazy hot <laughs> Hancock, Maryland. Uh, let's see. How did the rest of the day go? It was. Uh, have I mentioned it was hot? Uh, it went exactly the way that I thought it was going to. I was uh, super strong in that first half. Uh, third quarter, the heat started to come up a little bit. And then that fourth quarter, man, I'll tell you what, even though I was on the Western Maryland Rail Trail and, and making some nice speed, holy moly, um, the dew point, I think, is in the upper 60s, just to give you an idea of the humidity. Um, that may not mean anything to you, but it's a better measurement than relative humidity as to how much moisture is in the air. That is the point where dew starts to form. So uh, when you have 
dew points where water starts to form on the grass and surfaces and it's in the upper 60s, that's just bananas. That's a lot of water in there. So as a result, things like my evaporative cooling towel does not cool as well because it doesn't evaporate much because there's tons of water in there. So really, uh, really rough uh, end of the day. I mean, it was fine. I got into town, you know, uh, just fine at speed, everything. But boy, it, I was really ready to uh, call it a day at that point. Thank goodness that was the plan, you know. And I'm also feeling quite good about uh, leaving so early. I'm definitely going to do the same tomorrow uh, because it's going to be pretty much a carbon copy of today with the exception of there's probably going to be some uh, pretty decent chance of large thunderstorms by the time I get to Harper's Ferry. So my intention is to uh, get into Shepherdstown as quickly as I can. And Shepherdstown is less than an hour's ride from there to uh, my campsite. So that will go very well. I'll grab dinner there, and uh, uh, whether I eat it there or take it and go will largely depend on what the forecast is looking like. As of the moment, it looks like 8 o'clock is when rain's going to be hitting, which is right around sunset. So there's that. Um, that will be, of course, tomorrow. Really, the, the riding for the rest of today was really nice. I mean, the, the heat and humidity notwithstanding, the trail's in excellent, excellent shape. I, I really can't underscore how good this section is compared to past rides. Is it perfect? No, but this trail is never perfect. It rarely is. But generally speaking, if the trail in this section is in this kind of condition, I have nothing but uh, good stuff uh, further on up. There's only a few areas where it can be characterized as, as typically bad. And they've actually been improving those sections as we've been going along, particularly up near Shepherdstown. Now, Shepherdstown's, of course, on the West Virginia side, but uh, you can look at a map and see what I'm talking about. Uh, in any event, uh, that was sort of how things went. I rolled into Hancock and pretty much immediately went to the uh, gas station that I tend to go to for snacks and whatnot, got a cold Gatorade, and uh, got my electrolytes in me to replace what I had. I had been drinking a ton of fresh water and I only took one electrolyte pill for the day. And I think that that was the right call. Um, I think that in the past I have over electrolyted and I think that that has led to some less than stellar results. Uh, so that, that worked out really well as sort of like a replacement situation. And then I went across the street, roughly across the street to, um, the town park and what's great about the town park is that there's a big shelter and whatnot there there are bathrooms there's a water fountain so i can get fresh city water which i did later on but most importantly i was able to relax for a little bit in my hammock hi there yeah basically i got there a little after two o'clock and uh, that was just in the teeth of the heat. And there was a grove of trees. Oh, there was also a shower. Which, so I was able to, and it was a cold shower, which was tough at first. But once I got in it, boy, it just brought the core body temperature down. And I felt really good after uh, kind of getting the sweat off of me. And, you know, the first shower in a, uh, at least a day. And so that was, that was good. Then, uh, of course, got in the hammock and just, you know, threw the cooling towel around me. As I mentioned, it's so muggy, it wasn't as effective as uh, the other night, but it was fine. And then I just, I just took a nap, you know, I relaxed a little bit, I drank more water, and I just really enjoyed it. I listened to some podcasts, um, listening to a book called The Goldfinch, which is uh, apparently being made in a major motion picture soon so there's that um yeah it went really well and then i got a way too big dinner and kind of regretted it It got dessert too and you know tell you what even though i'm allowing myself sugar boy it just doesn't grab me anymore 
it is interesting what happens when you let the power of sugar <laughs> go away. It just, I, I look at it more as fuel now. I just don't get the same enjoyment. I felt kind of gross after having a, what was a really nice, you know, apple crisp. Zero complaints about the prep or anything like that. It's just interesting how I'm just not a dessert guy anymore. Uh, but I think it was good because I probably still had some uh, uh, calories to replace from today's riding. So that, that was good. And I'm happy, I guess I did, that I had a big meal, uh, which means I won't be snacking tonight in the tent like I did last night, which I was just hitting my cheese and cracker. Those, you know, those, those gas station cheese and crackers? I was at Target and went, uh, for a supply before I left, you know, well before I left, and got a whole box of them because it was like a buck 19 for like six of them or eight of them or something like that. And I'm like, dude, I'm usually spending that much for two of them at best. So look at me being all thrifty and saving money on this trip. So after the hammock, way too big dinner, had a nice beer. Um, the server, she was super nice, but she had no earthly idea about the beer. Hey, hey, kid fishing down there. Uh, no, no earthly idea uh, about beers generally. I was like, do you have an IPA? She goes, we have a grapefruit IPA. And then she started offering stouts and other things too. And I was like, hmm, I'm better stick with that grapefruit IPA because at least I know for that I know that she knows it's an IPA. So we're going to go with that. And it was actually quite good. I wish I knew what it was. I uh, should have asked after the fact because it was quite good. Interestingly, I am on... The CNO now on a stretch that runs parallel to the Western Maryland Rail Trail. And you can tell how little action this trail is getting now uh, because people tend to prefer the paved trail. It is a narrow single track in grass. I mean, barely the width of my tire. It's really interesting. Um, now, I'm the first person to say, hey, I usually take the Western Maryland Rail Trail. Generally speaking, I will camp on the other side of Hancock. Uh, but tonight I decided that I would, you know, go four or five miles, I think it's four miles, down to the next campsite. Uh, often I'll go to my cabin, which is typically an option for a weekday. I assumed that it would be for this trip. And then I got a renter who did an abnormal Sunday to Tuesday kind of thing. So I cannot go to my cabin. <laughs> but that's fine because on a day like today, that's pretty exposed seven miles largely up hills uh, and that would have been that would have been a rough climb I mean I would have taken a long break in Hancock before I, I went for it but uh, it's all good somebody else is enjoying my place so that's good all right well uh, I am going to be staying at a campground that typically gets some highway noise from Route 70, uh, actually I should say Interstate 70, which is not far from it. I don't mind interstate noise. Uh, train noise is a little rougher for me, so I think this will go just fine for me tonight. I am uh, at the point in the evening where the gnats are coming out and I've already taken a few out with my eyes. Uh, eye update, and since I had mentioned that I was having problems since having a mosquito fly in my left eye, before, uh, I realized this afternoon that it was at 100%. And then on this ride, I now have at least one, if not two gnats in my eye. So <laughs> it's a killing machine, my eyes, apparently, for the insect world. It's very, very, very sad, I suppose. All right, that'll do it for end of day one. Theme of the day was hot, but really, f like, I felt strong for most of it. And uh, Excited to get it, go to sleep early, get up early, and do a uh, similar ride as I did today. Make sure that I get as much cool riding in as possible, and then try to get a tent up before any rains come, because that will be a lot more fun. I don't mind a thunderstorm if I am placed in a spot that does not have the prospect of branches falling on me, trees falling on me, and I get in before the rain starts. 
So I should be able to pull all of that off without a hitch tomorrow. So we'll talk to you tomorrow. Statistics for days zero and one miles train, yeah, about 150-ish, give or take. Tree-based train delays, one. Miles bite, 62. Spider webs to the face, 19, give or take. Night rides, one. Campsites, two. Beers, one. Outdoor showers, one. And as always, we'd like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community, expanding into live shows, meetups, tour journals, you name it. If you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot annual options. If you're not into the whole small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society onto the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skadow, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgatis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Stuart Buchan, Todd Stutz, Mr. T, Roxy Arning, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Paul Culbertson, Scott Culbertson, Cody Forchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Drew Porter, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robert, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Hankel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Aviles Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Dan Gephardt, Jody Zoranin, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Biggle, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Gothman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushak, Greg Letoile Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Tom Bilch, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafter, Misha LeBlanc, and new to the society, Ari Messinger and David Grotke. And thanks also to all past and anonymous donors for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.